Starting out as a project engineer can be overwhelming, so avoiding common mistakes can and will make a big difference. In this video, we'll cover the top 9 mistakes that project engineers often make, and I'll provide actionable tips to help you steer clear from those mistakes and help accelerate your own career. If you're new here, my name is Keenan, and I'm a construction project manager and professional engineer here in Hawaii, and we talk about the industry and just life in general, so if that sounds cool to you, don't forget to hit that like button and subscribe to join our growing family here on YouTube. And with that, let's get into our our mistakes to avoid. So number one, not asking questions. Construction is confusing, there's a lot going on, and most of this stuff you can't learn in a classroom, so you're gonna be learning everything for the first time on the job. And I just see a lot of times, whether it's pride or not wanting to look stupid or a combination of both, a lot of times I don't see engineers asking enough questions, and I honestly see that as a disservice to yourself. If something is not clear, ask, because you don't wanna move in the wrong direction and screw something else up down the line. There's sometimes, even today, where I have to ask something like, hey, there's explain this to me like I'm three years old and maybe then I'll understand. Because in my opinion, I really need that level of clarity in order to know what move to make. So especially when you're starting out, you want to be asking all of these questions to make sure that you're very clear on what the tasks are at hand, maybe what expectations you have, or maybe what somebody else is saying to make sure that you're operating as efficiently as you can. And again, and I'll say this many, many times in this channel, construction is an experience-based industry. So the only way that you can learn is if you ask those questions, humble yourself and get yourself on the right track if you're not clear. There is no shame in saying that you don't know and honestly when you try to fake it and act like you know, that's a lot of times when you lose respect from either your peers, your upper managers or just other people around the job site. So it's better to always ask. Mistake number two is avoiding the field. So sometimes there are people out there that think, hey I got my college degree, you know I don't want to be out in the sun, I don't want to be out in the field like that's you know a dirty place or a rough place to be. The sun scary. But at a very basic level, construction is out there. It's outside. It's in the field. That's where all the magic happens. You can't get a way of learning how things get done, how things get built. And the best place to do that is in the field. And when you're out there in the field and you have that presence, you create that relationship with the guys out there and you can get a lot of great insights into how things actually get done. Anyone can draw a pretty picture, come up with the greatest plan, the greatest schedule. But if you don't truly understand the steps that it takes to actually get built, all of that paperwork is for nothing. And for me, I'm a very visual learner. So being out there in the field really helps me understand what those 2D drawings actually look like when it's being done outside by the tradesman. So if you're really worried about going out in the field, that's something that you're going to have to just get over that hump because you're holding yourself back from learning one of the most critical parts of the job. I would say that most of your time for the first few years of your career should be outside. There's always so much to see, so much to learn. Even to this day, I'm learning stuff from the guys in the field. So to me, all of the best engineers have that great base of all that field knowledge so that when they move forward in their career, they can build those 2D drawings in their mind because they've seen it already. Mistake number three to avoid is drawing the line in your responsibilities. So I know there's a lot of things these days where you know you wanna only do what your job is or you don't wanna overextend yourself or what have you. But to me, especially at the beginning of your career, that's one of the biggest disservices that you can do for yourself. Sure, it's great to hone in and focus on whatever your task is at hand. And yeah, you probably won't get paid more for doing more. But I would always try to reframe it and looking at it as you want to invest in yourself to be able to gain as much knowledge as you can in whatever industry you're working in. Even if you don't see construction as maybe your lifelong career, the more you learn, anything that goes into your brain is something that nobody can take away from you. So I look at it, especially if you're in your 20s, you really want to be able to spend that time when you don't have as many commitments like family or whatever. And you want to be able to immerse yourself and gain as much mental capital so that you can be useful later on in life or more useful, I should say. Drawing lines also makes it hard to work as a team. Drawing lines not only stifles the amount that you can learn, but it Again, a construction project is an entire process in itself. If you're doing buildings, it's not only good enough to only know the concrete or only know the plumbing. There's never going to be a building out there that only has plumbing. So you have to understand how everything intertwines with each other. And that's really the real skill and art of being a contractor. And also early in your career, you want to be seen as a team player. So the guy that's always drawing lines between his work and everybody else is someone that has looked at as selfish. Honestly, would you really want someone that's selfish being a manager in your company? Probably not. So again, especially at the beginning of your career, try your best not to draw those lines and try to think of it that the more that you learn now, the less you have to learn later on and you can help leverage those skills later in life. So number four, trying to climb too quickly. 
So I get it, you know, everyone wants to climb that corporate ladder. Everyone wants to get to that cushy office job or be the leader of everybody. But construction, especially in my opinion, you really don't want to do that. I have seen countless managers or supervisors that everybody underneath them can tell that they don't know what they're doing. And you really need a handful of jobs under your belt to truly understand something. So it's not often early in your career if you're going from job to job to job that you're doing the exact same thing every single time. And you don't really get that depth of knowledge until you do it the second or third time, which means that the amount of time it really takes you to master something or know something really well is years. And construction is one of those industries that it's actually really hard to fake it because there are so many other people that can check you or people that you have to interface with and you never want to be that boss that everyone is looking at as how do they get there. I kind of look at your career as building a pyramid. The more time you spend on the base making it as wide as possible and truly making that strong, the higher you go. And all the best people in the industry that I know have built their careers that way. So mistake number five is not seeking out mentors. And I know sometimes it's hard because seeking out a mentor to me is really important because it helps give you some sort of guiding star or something to strive for. So that gives you a direction in your career. Without people that you can emulate your career at, you're kind of just operating out there. So look at a project manager, superintendent, or maybe someone in a high position and try to talk to them and understand what they did to get to their position and what their current lifestyle is. And then you can start to piece together what that journey is gonna look like for you to get to that point. A lot of people like to compare their current reality to someone else's current reality who's maybe 10 steps ahead of them. But what's more important is understanding the journey to get from here to here because that's actually your roadmap to get there. You can't just emulate someone's life who's up here and expect to just get that. You have to understand the road and the pathway to get there. And that's why having that mentor can really help you get some clarity on that situation. And sometimes maybe there isn't really a mentor around and maybe not someone that you look up to. So maybe in that case, maybe it might be time to either switch companies or maybe switch industries, or you can reframe it and you can look at it as taking good from people and bad from people, or not taking bad, but maybe avoiding bad from people. So as you're kind of creating like a little cocktail of like all these good values and then trying to avoid all these bad attributes. And then you create this kind of ideal self and that's something that you can strive towards in the future. Mentors also help get you through tough situations. So there's times where maybe I'm going through something that I believe is really hard, but then they tell me how to get through it and maybe why that problem is actually not as big as you think it is. So again, just having someone to help guide you through your career really helps make sure that you have the correct expectation and that you have some kind of realistic roadmap to get where you want to go. All right, mistake number six is giving up too quickly. So I think too, I might be guilty of this a little bit, but you know, we kind of grew up in this age where you know we could Google something and you get the answer almost instantaneous. But there's a lot of things in construction that just take time, they just take effort. And sometimes I see a lot of young engineers not wanting to take that time to figure things out. So there's a couple things that happen with this. One is that you can kind of piss off your manager because it seems like you're lazy and you're not being very thorough in your work and you don't want to have that reputation. And the other thing is that you're not training yourself to be thorough. And that's something that will really affect you later on in your career. When we talk about drawings, there's actually a lot of layers that you really need to go to from the plan view to the enlarged view, then to the sections, elevations, details. And you can look in that in one little section of the drawing. But if you look at just one drawing and then you say, ah, I can't find it, then you're never going to get that level of clarity that you need in order to build something properly. Giving up too quickly also talks about the career in general as well. And and what's good about construction is that most projects are pretty temporary, only a couple years at a time. So there are times where maybe you like construction, maybe you like solving problems, but you just don't really have a good team or you don't have a good leader that's leading that team. So again, kind of going back to the mentors, finding the right people, maybe seeing if you can position yourself in order to make sure that you're with good people. And that's why sometimes, you know, you don't want to be giving up on the industry just yet. It's just that you don't have the right people in your corner. So again, this industry does take a long time to master. It is a lot of work. So just make sure that you stick with it. And mistake number seven is kind of related, but it's just not getting deep into the details. Especially when you're an entry-level engineer, you are supposed to be as deep into the weeds as anybody else on the project. And learning how to go all the way down into the details like that saying the devil is in the details is so true in construction every leak that you have every difficult situation on your project usually comes down to you not knowing the details
details. So as you go through the drawings, you read it, you go down the rabbit hole of the details, then you relate that to all the field work that you're doing, and then you can start to grow in your career and start identifying details that maybe aren't buildable or details that are gonna really screw you up later on. And then you can use all that knowledge and foresight to help prepare yourself better for the future. But again, when you're trying to build something and then you start looking for the detail, you've already lost. So being detail-oriented as an engineer is, to me, one of the best things, and we really need a lot more of that in the industry. Mistake number eight, and hopefully I don't trigger anybody, but being an entry-level engineer and trying to prioritize your work-life balance, that might set you back a little bit. And like for me, I understand, right? You don't want to live to work, you want to work so you can live. So especially when you're first starting in your career, again, construction's an experience-based industry. So if you want to get ahead as quickly as possible, the only thing that you can do is spend more time. You can be as efficient as you want, but just without the time factor, because of the way this industry works and how you learn basically everything on the job, it's really hard for you to be ready for advancement if you're not putting in the time when you're younger. The other thing as well is especially when you're first starting and you just start asking your boss how you can not work as much, it kind of gives off a vibe that you're more concerned about yourself than the team. And I know that's not usually the intent, but sometimes that perception can be people's reality. I always try to look at work, especially in your 20s, as an investment in yourself. So I think especially if you're just going home and playing video games or doing maybe not mentally expanding things, it probably is better for you to gain that extra mental capital because that's something that nobody can take away from you because it's all in your head. And I promise you construction is one of those industries that you get what you put into it. And hopefully you can grind during a time when you have less priorities and then later on you can kind of balance your life out because you have all of the skills and you've seen so many things in your past that it doesn't take you as long to be able to solve problems like it did when you first started. Every hour that you spend upfront in the early part of your career, I promise you will pay dividends later on in your life. And mistake number nine, I see a lot of engineers make is just being a little too quiet. And what I mean by this is that you kind of have to take control of your own career. If you see a job that you want to be a part of or a team that you want to be a part of, a lot of times you have to speak up and be a little vocal in order to try to get your foot in the door. Especially in the bigger companies, being vocal and vouching for yourself is really valuable and can help you be seen, especially at upper management levels. And again, there's always a balance to all of this, but you want to be a little bit on the side of being vocal because then at least you'll be seen. A lot of times these days, just those silent assassins that just go about their work, you know, maybe they don't get a lot of that recognition or a lot of that movement, but I say that you owe it to yourself to take control of your career. So being a little bit more vocal about either yourself or what you're doing, or even vocal for your team, you know, that can really help get you a lot of exposure and hopefully get you more opportunities in the future. So those are the nine mistakes that I see a lot of project engineers make. If you have any further questions about any of these, or if you want to add your own, just please feel free to put it in the comments below and I'll do my best to reply to you. Construction is a hard business and I'm here to help you guys navigate through it. So if you enjoyed this video, don't forget to hit that like button and subscribe and hit the notification bell below so you can join our growing family here on YouTube. Thank you so much for watching. I really appreciate your time and I'll see you on the next one.